Hey guys, it's Brandon from Pixel Planet Studios. Draw has been out for a few months now, and people are already creating some amazing hand-drawn animations right inside of After Effects with nothing but a mouse. And yeah, you can use a stylus as well, but what people are able to do right inside the application with nothing but a mouse is literally changing how they're using After Effects and what kind of projects they're able to do. Draw is a tool for After Effects that lets you draw and animate directly in your timeline. It turns your drawings into editable shape layers, giving you a complete vector-based workflow. Now, there is a native brush tool inside of After Effects that allows you to paint directly on a frame. But the problem is once you do it, it's baked into that effect on the layer, so you're not able to edit it afterwards. That means if you want to change the points of the path, the look like the stroke color with the dashes, or you want to animate or add effects to it, well, you'll probably want to look into getting Draw. It's the first time where you don't need to bounce between Sketch apps and After Effects. You can sketch, animate, and even storyboard right inside of one application. When you first open the Draw panel, the keyboard shortcuts pop up. If it's your first time opening it, you might want to look over some of them. So let's look over the UI. The shutter button grabs the current frame of the video so you can draw on it. If you're looking to crudely draw something, select a resolution of 25% so that it loads faster. If you need to be very precise, you can select a higher resolution. Grab opacity is the opacity that will load in. If you want onion skinning, which allows you to see the previous frame underneath for reference, lower this to something like 70%. If you want to trace something from the current video and you don't need to see the previous frame, set this to 100%. The FPS duration is how many frames you want what you're drawing to last. So if I'm doing an animation in a 24 frame per second comp, I might want each frame to last 6 frames so that you have time to see it. If you're working in 60 FPS, that might be even higher. But when I'm adding accents to a video, I tend to like to change the comp itself to something like 5 frames per second so that the video moves at the same rate as the illustrations. And then I'll keep this at 1 frame per second. Then we have Simplify and Smooth. Simplify reduces the number of points while smoothing is more for roundness. I generally like to keep smooth on, and I adjust Simplify depending on how simple of a shape that I want it to be. When I set Simplify to around 50% and start drawing cursive letters, for example, it looks great, really fluid and natural. Next we have Fill Options, so you can turn them on and off as well as adjust the stroke width. And then we have a variety of brushes, we'll come back to these. If we jump back up top, we have Render, which I like to leave set to Onion. If you set it to auto, it will jump to the next frame as soon as you pick up your brush. If you're only drawing one shape on your frame, it can speed up your workflow. However, it doesn't automatically load the next frame into your viewer window to draw on, so it might be better for an animation that isn't dependent on a video layer that you're loading in. And then you can set it to layers or keyframes. Keyframes will give you one layer that just has keyframes set on it, and layers will give you a separate layer for each frame. This is all personal preference. I sometimes like to see them as layers, but if I have a lot of layers in my comp already, maybe I want to keep this on one single layer. Okay, so let's take a look at actually doing some animation. So I'm going to grab this first frame here. At any point, if we wanna kind of start completely over, we can hit this clean button and that'll clear everything out. Okay, so I'm going to maybe select a stroke of, let's see what 15 looks like. I think that's a decent width. I'm gonna Command Z or Control Z to go back. And I'm going to go with white and we'll make it fully opaque. So close that. And you can see that it is set up for that kind of onion skinning where I can see the frame before it. I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to 100%. And the frames per second will leave at one frame. We've already set this to five frames per second. I've also used the Roto Brush tool to uh, separate the player and the basketball. And I've done kind of a cartoony washed out effect uh, on the footage below it. Like I said, I sometimes like to work in layers, so I'm gonna switch this to layers. Uh, our fill is off. And yeah, let's go ahead and just start uh, drawing here a little bit. So eventually I will outline the player, but I'll show you a little trick to doing that as long as we've already wrote a brush the player. So I'm gonna do a couple accents here. I think I'll draw on the ball here and you can see how it's simplifying this as I go. I'll also kind of highlight some of the clothes and the number here. 
And then I'll click this to step forward one frame. And I'll kind of continue some of those things. I can add some accent marks here to the ball as well. When you're done doing the animation you want to do, we can hit send as layers and each one of these will become a layer. We can obviously get a little more detailed with some of these. I'm able to come in here, select these all and I can increase or decrease the stroke. I can also add um, an effect to it. So there is a preset that's pretty cool in here. If I go to effects and presets, if I search for hand drawn, uh, this, if I go to full quality here, kind of gives everything um, kind of a rough and edges hand drawn type look. So that's pretty cool. And we can even come in here, we can select our roto layer and duplicate it twice. And so we have our roto layer and then we have this one. And so I'm going to add a simple choker to this and widen this one out and then I'll copy that effect and paste it on the one below it and widen this one out even more and then I will add a fill effect to this one uh, and make it white and then I will set the track mat from the one above it and I will set it to alpha inverted and now if I choke this even more you can see that we have this outline so if I unsolo this, I can tweak it until it's the width that I want. And I will pre-compose these and I will call this outline and add that same effect to it. And now we have a bit more of an organic hand-drawn type effect. You can get as detailed as you want with this. But let's take a look at a few of the other brushes just so we understand what all of these do. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean everything and reload in our first frame. Looking at the different brushes, we have our default brush. We have a straight line. So if you select this, your brush is going to be a straight line. You can also hold, if, you, if I go back here to the generic brush, you can hold shift and also draw a straight line. So as you're drawing, you can, you can hold shift to, to draw a straight line at any time. And if I undo these, we can keep going through the brushes. So here's an ink one. So this one uh, doesn't support using a fill and uh, we can see what that looks like. It's worth with all of these trying different widths to see some of them may work better in certain widths than others. Um, but you know, we could use this to write uh, Donovan's name and this might be kind of a cool organic way to do that. In fact, we could even use the onion skinning and set this down to 70% and then go one frame forward and try to draw the same thing. I'll just trace what I already have done. And since it's hard to be real precise, it's by nature going to be a little bit uh, different. And so I'm gonna jump one more frame Okay, and then I'm going to send those as layers. And now we have uh, his name in kind of a cool handwritten uh, way. I duplicate these a few times. And now we have kind of a cool looking name animation. I'm gonna clean my canvas again and load this back in. And we'll take a look at this calligraphy one. Kind of a similar idea that it's kind of an uneven, uh, you know, pen type thing. You should play with a lot of these on your own. As you increase the stroke width, you might discover different looks or uses for them. Um, 
you know, this Pixels one, for example, is pretty cool. This electric one, uh, also really neat. You know, some of these, you know, you might not have a lot of uses for and other projects, they might be a really, really cool brush. I know the community requested a lot of these brushes. One of the ones I think is really cool is this spider one. No relation to Donovan Mitchell being nicknamed Spida. When I draw something with this, it kind of fills in, almost giving it like a mesh type of look. I kind of like it as far as something to potentially accent. So let's make like a red color here. And, uh, and I'll turn the stroke width uh, down here. I think it's, I think it's really cool. So let me step forward a few frames here. Uh, I'm gonna set the grab opacity up to a hundred so we don't see the frames underneath and keep stepping forward. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is just kind of a really uh, unique look, I think. And uh, I'm just gonna do a couple frames here so we see what's going on. But I could see this one being a really cool uh, use for something. And uh, again, you know, we can send this as layers and it will go back to the beginning here and start adding these. And you can see what these look like. So to round out the brushes, we have uh, watercolor. It was described to me that watercolor is super demanding. So I'm gonna make a new 1080 comp, call it watercolor. Um, I think that I think the thought is that this would be used more of a one-time background than it would be a frame by frame. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, clean this and uh, I'm gonna kind of make this big, maybe even bigger. Let me clean this again so we don't have all those. Uh, so yeah, let's do uh that and then maybe we'll add in some blue and and i'll do some purple i'm going to turn the opacity down here and then i will uh maybe up the frames per second duration here and i will send this as a layer and this is going to take a second to process it's an after effects limitation So yeah, it uh, created it here. Uh, like I said, it took a little bit of time and uh, might be a little bulky, but if you pre-compose it and maybe call it something like watercolor background, um, you should be able to move around uh, your comp after it computes that one frame pretty quickly. Uh, confetti is another kind of fun one and uh, then bubbles. Bubbles might be something that you could do to do a watercolor type of effect. If watercolor is too resource demanding, bubbles might be able to achieve a similar effect. Or you might be able to do another effect. Okay, now let's take a look at using a stylus with draw. So we're going to use an Apple Pencil and an iPad. So if I have the draw window, uh, separated from the rest of the UI and I click and hold the green button and hit move to iPad, it will now show up on the screen. So now we can grab our first frame and we're going to rotoscope this singer. So I'm going to this time select a fill and I'll do a maybe a green color here and I'll turn down the stroke width to zero. And I will go ahead and just start drawing. And then I can just jump to the next frame. I'm going to turn up the grab opacity so that we don't see the onion skinning below. And then we'll jump to the next frame again. Change the color hex. Now I'm drawing right inside of After Effects. Drop, drop, drop. I 
When I'm done drawing, I'll select send as layers and go ahead and send it into After Effects. Now, if you're interested in using a stylus, it's worth noting that the calligraphy brush on Windows supports pressure. Now, if you're on Mac, there is a shortcut to increase or decrease the width of the stroke. Okay, let's look at a bit of a crazier example. So we're going to recreate uh, this Tetris logo with the pixels brush. So I'm going to go ahead and select the pixels brush and let's uh, crank this up to, you know, a little over 100 and also crank the frames per second duration up because we're only going to be doing uh, one frame of this. So you can see here I have a light blue brush, kind of a 70% opacity and I will close that. And I just want to kind of recreate uh, what I'm seeing here. So I'm going to go um, four blue ones, and then that's the only light blue we have. I'm going to change to green, and I could go on top of this logo. I just didn't know if I would be about the same size. I didn't want to be locked into that. So um, just recreating these same uh, colors. And the cool thing about this is all of these squares that it generates are going to be perfectly in a grid as long as you keep your brush size the same size. A lot of us probably know it can be kind of a pain to set something like this up. So after creating this, I'm going to hit this button. This is one we haven't discussed yet. This is going to create a new layer to paint on. So when we send this as layers, it will be a separate layer. And you can do this at any point when you're drawing if you want to separate things into different layers. So for this case, I'm going to hit this and uh, you can see it didn't jump forward a frame, but it did kind of give us our onion skin thing that this is kind of a reduced opacity. And so now I'm going to select this red color and close this and we're one above here so i'm gonna select right here okay and then we are going to send this to after effects now frederick did tell me that this button might move down here so that we have a jump forward one frame and we also have a like paint on a new layer uh so keep in mind in future updates this button could move there so i'm going to go ahead and send these as layers and um you know you'll see actually the way it did this it actually did do them as separate layers i'm not sure in the future if we could expect that these would go to the same point but we now have this uh tetris block uh ready to fall down here so i'm going to create a new solid and pick a similar color to this tetris background and drop it down here and then I'm going to make both of these layers 3d and I'll bring up their 3d properties and I'm going to change the render here to advanced 3d and now I'll increase the extrusion depth and create a new camera and now I have the ability to rotate around here let me crank up the extrusion depth even more. And now because this layer is separated, we can uh, make this a new piece coming down. I've had a ton of fun playing with Draw, and I'm really excited to see what you all create with it. If you make something cool, make sure to tag us at Pixel Planet Studios and Pencil Park. We'd love to see what you come up with. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and check out some of the other After Effects and video production content we have on this channel. We'll see you on the next one. I watched Pixel Planet's video for some tips. Now I'll click the link, head to AE Scripts. Load up a brush, change the color hex. Now I'm drawing right inside of After Effects. Drop, you drop, we drop.